Uh, we've just heard their uh, bank rate has indeed been held at five and a quarter percent. And really, I suspect the uh, reasoning behind that is that uh, whilst inflation remains at elevated levels, don't forget the headline rate of inflation sits at some uh, 6.7 percent right now. So more than three times the Monetary Policy Committee's target rate. Uh, the, uh, there are lots of uh, signals coming out of the economy that activity is starting to soften. We've seen, for example, recent survey data, Jane, suggesting that uh, uh, the uh, activity in the manufacturing and the services sectors is starting to uh, slow down. We've also uh, seen a slight tick up in the unemployment rate. Um, uh, weighed against that is the fact that wage inflation remains at elevated levels. That's currently running at some 7.2%. And uh, that is something that the bank will be uh, rather concerned at. But I think it's the fact that you are seeing these signals of a softening in the labour market that will have made the uh, Bank of England uh, hold for now. Uh, it's uh, a decision, actually, I should say, Jane, in keeping with what we've heard recently from the uh, central banks elsewhere around the world. Uh, the European Central Bank, for example, this time last week, they kept interest rates on hold. And last night, the US Federal Reserve, likewise, uh, they kept uh, interest rates on hold. Their main target rate, Fed funds, they kept that at uh, unchanged at between five and a quarter and five and a half percent. So really, the Bank of England's decision is very much in keeping with uh, those decisions from other central banks around the world. I'm just looking uh, to see if I've actually got any more uh, information on the uh, on the on the vote here which is something that the market's been uh, looking out for and indeed the uh, vote was uh, three to six uh, which is interesting that's exactly as it was last month so six members of the monetary policy committee well, it's, actually, it's actually a difference last month the MPC voted five to four in favor of keeping interest rates on hold so there were four hawks if you like who wanted to carry on raising interest rates this month it was six voting in favour of keeping rates on hold and three voting for another interest rate rise. The difference there is that we've had a change of personnel in the MPC. So John Cunliffe, who's one of uh, Andrew Bailey, the governor's deputies, he stepped down. Now, he was in favour last month of raising interest rates again. Uh, he's been replaced by another internal member, Sarah Breeden, and uh, she was widely expected to go with the governor, Andrew Bailey, and indeed she's done so. So uh, the vote six to three in favour of keeping interest rates on hold. Uh, and, and that's what it is this month. I mean, I know we, we can't look into a crystal ball and speculate, but, but do you think that, that this suggests that the next time we get this decision, it will be held further or could even fall? I don't think uh, anyone is going to be in a position to start talking about interest rate cuts for the time being. But I suspect the commentary that we will get from the bank today is all about uh, interest rates remaining where they are and not going any higher. Uh, that's certainly the takeaway last night from uh, the US Federal Reserve, the uh, chair there, Jay Powell, indicating to Wall Street that uh, this is it interest rates in the US have peaked. And I suspect that will be very much the sort of mood music from the bank today. The expectation is that uh, uh, interest rates are going to uh, remain higher for longer. Um, and in fact, the governor has actually said today in the statement, Jane, uh, it's much too early to be thinking about rate cuts. Now, the other big news that we've had today is uh, the bank has upgraded its latest economic forecast. And I can tell you that uh, the bank has cut its uh, growth forecast for this year for next year and for 2025. The Bank of England is now predicting zero growth for next year. It has also, however, said that it expects inflation to come down rapidly in coming months. So this is fairly downbeat stuff uh, from, the, from the bank, uh, although they are confirming, as I say, that they think inflation is going to come down rapidly. You'll recall, of course, that at the uh, beginning of this month, uh, beginning of last month, October, the energy price cap uh, was lowered uh, in response to uh, lower oil and gas gas prices. That is going to have a big impact on the October inflation data, which is perhaps another reason why the bank has decided to uh, keep interest rates on hold. But as I say, the forecasts today are not terribly encouraging from the bank. It's predicting, as I say, uh, growth, zero growth next year, and it's cut its forecast for this year and next. That again ha uh, f uh, has informed its decision to keep interest rates on hold. But I don't think we can talk about interest rates being cut at any time in the foreseeable future. Certainly, that's not what the market is expecting. The market is not uh, looking for any uh, cuts in interest rates, probably until the final three months of next year at the very earliest. Although, if we continue to see a softening in the economy, uh, that will be uh, probably uh, something that might uh, jog the bank to move more rapidly. It's also worth pointing out, Jane, the bank has been in a pretty difficult position publishing these latest forecasts because of 
of course, on the 22nd of this month, we get the autumn statement from uh, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. So the bank hasn't been able to factor into these forecasts uh, that what, what fiscal decisions the Chancellor may make at that time.